Hello! Komşum! Hello komşum! Arkadaş! Arkadaş! Good to see you, Johan! Buyurun! Çok güzel, I know. Çok güzel. This is the everything I know in Turkey. In okay, Turkey. that's good. You are doing well? Yeah. You are, yeah. You are doing well. Okay, we are, good. We are recording, right? Yeah, I started okay, recording now. And um, first, I would like to welcome you in uh, UFO Disclosure Bulgaria. Wow, great. And we have here our friend that's from good. Turkey, from Istanbul. Um, can you introduce yourself? Actually, I don't know how to introduce you. Are you director of this I series? Am the or? Yeah, I am the founder and president okay. uh, of Sirius UFO Research Center, Space and Sciences Research Center, which was uh, Until established. Your name. My Tell name us. is Haktan Akdogan. Okay. And uh, this research center we established in 1995. Uh, almost like 13 years ago in Turkey but uh, my interest to the subject goes back to when I was like seven eight years old when it's, it's, I was watching Star Trek okay. I, was, I was so fascinated by that show and it took uh, my attention and I was so uh, impressed and uh, watching the sci-fi books and uh, movies and reading sci-fi books then uh, when I went to study to uh, after uh, high school, when I came to the United States for university, to New York, I started doing a lot of research about this phenomenon all over. In what you study in New York? I studied art. Okay. But I was always involved with this uh, subject, UFOs and uh, spirituality, all this stuff. So, uh, from 1985 to 1996, I stayed in the, in the United States, eight years in uh, New York and three years in Los Angeles. Then, uh, of course, during that time, I did a lot of research about this phenomenon, a lot of documentaries, books, and going to a lot of conferences, meeting a lot of pioneer researchers. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, more you get into this, the more you, it, it, it attracts you, it, it gets you into Something it. like a fire. Exactly. <laughs> Same to you. Same to you. So, it's a very interesting subject. It's very, very important for the mankind, for this planet, for the evolution of the planet, uh, where our place in the universe and everything. And uh, when I went back to Turkey in 1996, I, 1995 and 1996, I established this research center in order to educate my own people in Turkey because uh, I was noticing when I was traveling to Turkey during that period of time I was staying yeah. here. Nothing was happening, there's no, there were no research centers, there were no TV shows about it. So I felt sorry about Turkish people also because they need to know the truth about this phenomenon. So I said, I'm going to go back to Turkey, I'm going to do what I do right now, I'm going to inform and educate people about this. How many, how many people was with you in the beginning? We were like, of course, we, in order to uh, be Probably established. This research center, you have to have at least seven people in the board. So we were, of course, seven, but now we are like a lot of thousands of people because a lot of volunteers. How many is now? We have thousands of people because there's so much interest in UFO phenomena in Turkey. But the first thing we did, we did TV show about UFOs when I first moved there on a national TV. I did like 52 episodes in three different national TV. That was a smart thing to do because when you do a TV show, it was every week on a national TV, you get a lot of attraction. Okay, the ratings were up and everything. So people, they know you, they know your research center. So what happens is that you built your uh, uh, constitution, I mean your institution and everything quite fast. And also when people, they see something in the sky, they, see they, call, the stress, you. they call you because they know where to call. Yes. Because you, you're, you're a known personality, a public figure. So uh, that's what happened. And we started also organizing international conferences in Turkey. We did like six international conferences with thousands of attendees. Each conference we have between 2,000 to 5,000 people coming in. Turkish. Yeah, I mean, Turkey and about 
like a yeah. neighboring countries. Yeah. I had privilege to have all the pioneer researchers coming to Turkey, from Eric von Däniken to John Mack, Bud Hopkins, everybody, you name it. They all came to my conferences. Of course, we knew each other through, I mean, the United States, all the work that we were doing together. And uh, that also helped a lot to increase the knowledge, the consciousness, the information about this phenomena. So then after that, we start doing exhibitions, UFO and alien exhibitions, on mobile, like a big truck we converted into museum, we did it in the tent. Also, uh, we, had, we had several exhibitions traveling throughout Turkey uh, in order to inform and educate people about the subject. And so we keep doing what we do. So you're the only one in Turkey who do, dealing with this? This or? kind of, of course, there are a lot of... Uh, other organizations? Other, right? Not organizations, mostly like websites. Oh, some, okay. But we are the most serious and Are they jealous known. with you? No, why should they be? I'm because we are, we are that happened in Bulgaria. That's why I'm asking. Ah. And because we are neighbors, I said because we're balcony, probably you yes, have the same you. attractions like us. <laughs> Yeah, but that happens, of course, we are talking about humans, humans has all kinds of feelings. But the thing it is, is we are the pioneer group, you know, we are more respected. Uh, we also start uh, ufology and exopolitical courses in the universe. So, I'm a Muslim, so if you look to the Quran, as far as I know, it is written that God said we have created many worlds. It means that there isn't only one world, our world. Could be other worlds. I believe that God provided life not just for us, but also for the many others, like extraterrestrials. It is quite problematic to open a course based on an unscientific activity. I think it will hurt the credibility of Akdeniz University. Courses in a university. Mm -hmm. This is the how that happened. Breakthrough stuff, mainstream stuff, and uh, so the how that happened. We were invited, me and my vice president Erhan Kolba. She is a good guy too. He's uh, mm -hmm. writing a lot of books on the subject too. He's in uh, working with us. We were asked to give lectures in a university okay. okay. conference. Okay, just a yeah. simple basic conference. We went up there. It was like eight hundred people. The uh, but we were invited by a professor of this university. It wasn't just students who invited us. It was the professor who was interested in the subject. Oh, yeah. So, after this conference, it was a one-day conference, like two, three hours, he invited us back three months later for another one. So, we went again. We were so excited because this professor has keep, you know, inviting us to his university to give lectures to students and also to some teachers as well. So after that conference, the second one, he talked to us, he says that, I want to start a ufology courses here in this university. I'm going to talk to the head of the university. I'm going to uh, make sure this is happening because this is the most important subject. Do you get support from Ministry of Education? If you have that ministry, I don't know. Just uh, no, he had to ask the head of the university, okay. another professor. Is it a private university or? No, state-owned university. Uh, okay, okay. Like 30,000 students. It's one of the largest universities and most respected Which city is that? In Antalya. Okay. In Mediterranean coast. Yeah. By the... Uh, yeah, Antalya is a famous Antalya. place it's for... It's famous for uh, touristic right. area. Uh, so... After he spoke with his head, head of the university, another professor, the chairman of the university, he accepted also. They invite us to speak, to have a meeting with the chairman of the university. Me along with my colleague, what we did, we had a meeting with the chairman of the university for 20 minutes in his room. He was so excited because he had an encounter. He had seen a UFO. He shared it with us the chairman of the university. So he said, okay, let's go, let's start this uh, courses. So it's been uh, three, four months that we're giving classes. It's so exciting because this is first time 
in the mainstream scientific circle accepted this as a as a course in their regular studies in phylogeny and geopolitica. So this is a magic true, uh, I mean breakthrough stuff, and uh, it was all over on the news on Newsweek and uh, all, all other. Yeah, foreign, we know that. <laughs> yeah, and also in Turkey. I saw so that. Quite <laughs> you saw quite excited. You saw you seen the yeah, I saw the it music, yeah. yeah. So it's a quite a good uh, development for. What me. was the most exciting case you investigated? <laughs> For us, I mean, there's... Or everything is exciting. Everything is exciting and everything is not exciting afterwards because you know that they are here, we've been visited throughout history of mankind. There's abduction cases, there's contactees, there is so many evidence from all times to present. So there is a very close range encounters with military bases, military personnel, Air Force pilots. We have now over 60 pilots and high rank generals and radar operators operators from Turkey. And they open to talk to yeah, you? They, after they retire, they talk about oh, okay. it. During their work in the, in the army, in mm -hmm. the uh, state, they don't, they're not allowed to speak okay. about it all because right. there's yeah. some rules. It's yeah, all right. in the National rules. security. Yeah, yeah, that's what they okay. say. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but after they get retired, they come forward. And talking. On TV, we go on TV all the time on national TV. Once, twice a, a month, we go on national TV. About you still have TV. this program? Or? We don't have program, but we are getting invited to other news programs, other uh, any kind of show programs uh -huh. to talk about because it gets the, the when we are on TV, they're re 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 rating and watching uh, figures are so high because uh, people get a lot of interest about the subject so mm -hmm. they invite us very often so most of the time when we go we take our you know pilots the generals the high rank officials with us so uh, persons yeah because they talk about their encounter during this live show on tvs and everything so this is always uh, very important because they're very credible people right when they experience when they uh, explain and they talk about their experience with all the details and everything so it makes uh, more uh, you know yeah serious. can you can you reveal a little bit a little bit more about this Kluburgas if I say correctly case uh, the Kluburgas case was uh, became famous because as a night shot one of the best night shots ever mm -hmm. because you don't just see the crap you see move on move on the confirm that is surreal not just move on, a lot of uh, institutions, yeah. scientific Turkish institutions. Turkish institution also. Turkish yeah. institution, I this know one that. is very important because this is the highest scientific institution owned by the state, by uh, In Turkey. the Turkish Republic of Turkey. Yeah. And a lot of high rank scientists, senior scientists, they work there. What happened was, this is an interesting story. When Kumurga's case came to us, we went to investigate, and we got the footages, we analyzed them frame by frame, all the pixels and everything. We knew that it was definitely. Really I have this genuine. report, I saw it. Oh, great. <laughs> Perfect. And also, uh, there are multiple witnesses. Witnesses are very important, very credible people. So we talk all of them because they are from the same area. They also witness these sightings because it went on few times, a couple of years in a row, several times. So, and we had the press conference about this case because it's very strong, uh, a lot of witnesses, and great footage has been analyzed and everything. So it was all over on the news and the press and the media. So some scientists, skeptics, they made a comment to, them, to some TV guys and the newspapers saying that this cannot be real it's bullshit, they are faking people. So one of the TV guys, non-TV guy, invited them and us to his TV show to talk about the case. We went, they came to scientists, they confronted us. Mm -hmm. And during the TV show, I the guy kept saying this cannot be real. I said, first of all, have you analyzed the footage? No. Have you spoken with the witnesses? No. Okay, how can you be as a scientist 
so close-minded. If there is a case, you have to investigate it first before you come to any conclusion. I said, I'm going to give you this chance. I had him during the live show on national TV. The original footage, I told him, you get it analyzed in your laboratories. And the guy who was running the show, he got so, you know, because it was happening in, during his show, he says, we got to follow this case. We go to your institutions, to the laboratories, to follow what's going to come out from your, yeah. uh, your testing. Right. <laughs> so, I was great. So, the following few days later, we went all together with the cameras to their institution, scientific institution. What is it? They didn't let us in their rooms that they analyzed it, but we went in the, in the area. All the cameras were shooting. So they analyzed it. They came up with the same conclusion as we did. They said, because they had to sign and stamp it, saying that this footage is not fake. There is something on, but they didn't say it was a UFO with the, uh, uh, by aliens, but they, they used the term uh, of UFO saying unidentified flying object. They didn't, they, of course, they, didn't, they weren't allowed to say that <laughs> it was from uh, space, from other beings, craft, or whatever. Right. But still using the same word as we did, like as a UFO. So it was a great success for us. So that made the headline again, because the most respectful institution, scientific institution, came up with the same solution. Then after that, I give this to Yuri Geller. Yuri Geller, uh, he, he got it uh, investigated and analyzed it in Germany. And a couple of other guys, in one in Portugal, one in Ch Chile, uh, Carlos, well, I forgot his name, he's a video analyzer, mm -hmm. footage analyzer, all came up with the same conclusion as this is genuine footage, which is real, there is a craft that they couldn't identify. So. By the way, I'm not sure if I saw something more clear like your video in the world for UFO. Because your video show, I mean, you can see exactly the figures inside. Yeah, that's what makes this case very yeah, important. Right, and I haven't seen something like this you, in the yeah, world. In the ufology, yeah, this became one of the best positions in ufology because of that, as you mentioned. Uh -huh. It's a very good point because you don't just see the craft. Yeah, you see inside. You see inside. Yeah. You see some silhouettes and some shapes. Right, right. Some figures. Yeah, yeah. So also the structure. So it's a very metallic structure. Uh, very interesting case. So yeah. it's still people they talk about. It. It's been like ten days. 10, I mean, this is the legend. <laughs> one of the yeah. Yeah. Like two thousand seven, eight, and ten. Seven, no, seven, eight, and nine. So it is all. It has been almost ten, ten years. Right. Yeah, it's a very, very good case. Very and strange. what about this abduction? Yeah, abduction phenomenon. Many, is, many uh, people speculating with this. They say, "Oh, I was abducted just to be famous, to be shown in the TV." No, of course, right? there's always people like that. Yeah. Why not? How you know who is uh, who is real uh, witness of this? What we do not? is. Our cases, we do cross checking, we do the background, we see if this guy. Medical or this records, woman, maybe. Medical <laughs> records, of course, it's very important. And we go under hypnotic regression, we put them in a deep trance. And they go to the dead time that they're being abducted, uh, uh, being up in the ship. And you mean the regression? You mean the psycho regression? Regression, yeah. Okay. Deep regression that yeah. they. With it because they don't remember the whole scenario. Yes. They just have some, some. flashbacks, some, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, when you put them into hypnotic hypnosis uh, uh, regression, they, with all the details, they tell you what's going on in the craft. Sometimes they get some telepathic information with, by the, uh, from these aliens, the, the beings, that they do some experiment on them. So uh, we have some strong cases. We, as a matter of fact, tomorrow, uh, Sunday morning, during my presentation, I'm going to be sharing some of them. Uh, How many real abductions you have? Any reported? We, 
they had over 800, over 800 cases. And we, uh, so far, we uh, did research on 300 cases. Uh, but only 35 or 40 of them were genuine. The other ones were like, we weren't sure about it. Okay. But there must be much more than, of course. Because some people, they think they are having a dream. They don't know it's real. Yeah. So they don't want to report it. Because these guys, the aliens, they take you during a sleep dream state. So this way you don't get scared. You think it's a dream. It's an astral plane. It's another part of uh, consciousness level. So uh, most people, they don't report it. And also some, they scared of being ridiculed or uh, for their, from their job and their, you know, yeah. Uh, family. One going to say the neighbors, yeah. the friends. This, the, yeah, the social reaction right. that they will get from right. other people. So that's the other reason. But we get uh, more cases we are getting right now about the abduction case. How many uh, uh, reports you have for sightings with UFOs? I mean, what, which kinds? Yearly, First, second, third? Yeah, we, we yearly we receive, I mean, monthly we receive almost like. 700 to 1500 reports. But all over the Turkey. All over Turkey. Uh, during the summertime, it raises to 2000, 3000 a month. This is reports. Just reports without pictures? Some, Anything? I'm going to say, uh, maybe 10, 15 percent of them with footages. Some video camera, like movies, some like uh, still pictures. photos, pictures. Okay. Uh, most of them are during a at night taken mm -hmm. during the night time but some during broad, broad daylight and also all these photos when we analyze them only eight to ten or eleven percent of them are genuine the rest becomes like stars. misidentification venus stars chinese lantern or uh, balloon weather balloon or mm -hmm. aspos uh, yeah. uh, atmospheric phenomenon but 8 to 11 percent makes like hundreds of cases a year so uh, we, that's why we get also which i'll be showing during the conference yeah a lot of uh, videos pictures. and pictures during daytime great great photos and so it's happening a lot in turkey mm -hmm. but the, it, that doesn't mean it doesn't happen other countries it's happening all over the or only chance that we have is we are very known in turkey so People, when they see something strange, they report us. Yeah. They don't keep it to yourself because then they know where to report it. So that because we are very popular, very public institution and uh, figures, so we receive a lot of stuff. Um, you have a UFO museum in Istanbul? Yeah, we have a museum which travels to spare shopping malls. Uh, we used to have a stable permanent museum. Now we are taking that to a tour, different parts. Mm -hmm. But right now I am working, this is the first time I am saying this in public to your viewers, because you are a special guy and we are good friends and I like you. Uh, we are going to build a museum in Los Angeles. In a couple of months we are getting the place. We already started about 13 months ago to build all the artifacts, the replicas, the models, everything has been... We, we've been working on this project for 13, 14 months now. So, uh, we're gonna do it in America, in Los Angeles. And we are so excited about it. Probably within a year, it's gonna be a grand opening. So you're gonna be on mm -hmm. uh, for... Yeah, but you're still going to keep this in Istanbul. Oh yeah, the one in Istanbul is going to be... So Bulgarians can come. Ah, Bulgarians always can come. <laughs> the neighbors will come to We are open to Bulgarians. <laughs> we okay. Are um, what do you think about disclosure? When that will happen? Who is going to have, make that? Yeah, the government, I the scientists, think, think or social media? Social media and the public. I don't think any government is going to come up with this information. No way, because if they do, this will change every institution, will cause a lot of turmoil, that's what they think. The political system will collapse, all the belief system will collapse, all the bank system, money system, all the capitalist system will collapse. 
So they don't want this because they run the show. They gain fame, money through this politicians and you know belief system they use it. So they don't want this to be over. I think the aliens also they have they come here as a with a plan. They don't just come here to show themselves. They have a cosmic plan. I think they are increasing public consciousness by showing them. So and with the internet getting widespread right now, so the the increase of the public consciousness and uh, about this has gone quite up. Mm -hmm. And more and more in each year it's gonna go faster and faster and at a certain point when the general public consciousness is ready they will show more clearly themselves. I think we still have ahead at least 15 to 25 years ahead of us for this to happen. But I don't think during this any period any government, Trump or Obama didn't Clint didn't do it, Trump will never do it, any other government government is not gonna come any forward. So uh, this is about the public who's gonna do this change, who's gonna make this happen. So for us as UFO researchers and enthusiasts, we have a mission to fulfill for every being who has, has done sighting or didn't do any sighting, doesn't matter whether a believer or not. We have to let people know around us about this reality because this is going to increase a lot of consciousness and also it's going to make us think a very broader way that what we are and where our place is in the universe and also we are all earthlings in this planet sharing the planet. Why we are going through all these fights and wars and terror and all this distraction in the ecological system and everything. So what will make this change is the UFO disclosure because people will get closer to each other, the countries will get closer to each other I mean they are gonna think like we are all earthlings and sharing and being here all together so let's stop our fighting, let's put our energy for the development of resources, new free energy uh, all these things, then will happen, this contact will happen and we'll get a lot of information from aliens and we'll be an intergalactic family with them. Mm -hmm. So this is, that's why this, this subject is just so, so important for the evolution of mankind and for the evolution of this planet. So that's why we are here and doing all this work all together and doing conferences, TV shows and museums and exhibitions. The only goal is to increase the public consciousness because we are all here together as, a, as, as humans, as a galactic beings. That's very important. Well, thank you very much for your time and you're our friend in Bulgaria. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be very happy to have you in uh, some future conference for UFO. Thank you so much, <laughs> Ivan. It was my pleasure. It was, uh, I say hi to everyone. Uh, in Bulgaria when we expecting them to come to our museum in Istanbul uh, to our conferences and to follow you with the ladies and ladies and bunch of mm -hmm. folks. Do you want to say in Bulgarian Zipovyadete? Zipovyadete. Yes. <laughs>